This video will help you get started with Tinkercad SimLab's keyboard-driven motors. We'll look at setting up this forklift uh, to drive and lift this pallet. We'll then drop the pallet on the elevator and lift it up to the goal on the third floor. Let's start with the forklift and getting that operational. Since most of my scene is modeled, I am here in the SimLab, which is shown by this falling apple. I can switch back and forth to the 3D workspace if I need to further model, but for now I'm setting up the motors in SimLab to drive this forklift. I'll start with the wheels. Let's start by dragging out an axle connector onto this wheel. You can see it, the wheel is already associated with this connector. Let's drag the other association handle onto the truck. Good. So the orange handle is associated with the wheel and the blue handle is associated with the truck. We just need to center this connector on the wheel. So what I can do is select the connector and the wheel and try to align. I will click on the wheel to keep it stationary in the align operation and then click the centers to put that connector in the center of that wheel. Good. Now we can set up our key interactions and then duplicate this connector to the other wheels. I'll select the wheel and choose a type continuous. We also have servo, which allows you to set positions, and steppers, which allow you to do both continuous and positional. We'll use continuous. We'll leave this motor torque high. Our motor speed will leave at zero because this is the speed we want it to go when we're not pressing buttons. Our max speed we can set to something like 200. Now I can edit the interactions for this connector. I want to use the standard WSAD to drive this car. So let's start with W to drive it forward. So what I want to do is I want to change the speed by, let's do 100, and we get a preview of that, and we'll do this while held. While held means when we take our finger off of the key, it will go back to its default zero speed. Okay, let's do S. S should be change speed by negative 100 while held. A and D will set up, we'll do an initial setup, change speed by, and we'll call this, A will say negative 50. Uh, and D will change speed by 50. And you can see how that's going to work. We want to make sure it's while held. Okay. Let's copy and paste that and move it over. Um, what we'll do is we'll do our alignment. Um, before I do that, I will make sure that I have the orange handles on this wheel and the blue handle on the truck. Now let's align these two things. Let's align the connector to the wheel. Click on the wheel to keep it stationary and center the connector there. Good. Now let's do the same thing. We'll copy these two. You can see I'm keeping my interactions as I copy these connectors. So let's copy these and paste them and move them to the other side. And get those approximately in place. I'll select the wheel and the connector to make sure they're aligned. And again, Click on the wheel to make sure it stays in place, but that looks good. I'll just make sure that it's in there. And this one, I'll align. Click on the wheel to keep it in place and move that connector right into place. 
Good. Now we'll associate this connector with this wheel. I'll drag the orange handle onto the wheel and the blue handle onto the body and do the same with this one. The orange handle goes to the wheel and the blue handle goes to the body. Okay, let's try this out. I'm going to simulate and try and press my keys here. Let's simulate. This falls off because we haven't set it up yet, but if I hit S, I can go backwards. W goes forward. A and D aren't quite doing what I'm wanting, so let's change those. A should have been while held, so let's fix that. What it's doing is, is it's staying at 50 when I press it. I only want it to change to 50 while it's held, so I'll just change that. And now let's test it out again. S is backwards, W is forward, A, D. Now I want to set this up so that A and D turn the forklift. So what I need to do is change these. So for A, I'll make this 50. And D, I'll make this negative 50. While held. So let's test this out now. Backwards with S, forward with W, and turning with A and D. I have these wheels going in opposite directions, so that turns the forklift. Good. Next, let's connect the forklift. For this, we'll use a slider connector. Drag the slider connector out onto the top of the forklift. That automatically associates that slider with that forklift. We want to associate the other part of the slider with the forklift body. Good. For the slider type, we can set either continuous or positional, and we, let's just call this continuous, okay? I can set the lower limit to be zero, okay? And the upper limit, I want to set at about, let's say 20. Okay, let's edit the interactions. I'm going to say R will set speed to positive 10 on press. F will set speed to negative 10. On press, let's see how this drives. S for backwards, W for forward, D for right, A for left. Good. And let's see how the forklift works. R for up, F for down. Excellent. Let's move on to the elevator. For the elevator, I'll use a slider connector and I'll drag it onto the elevator here. The handle I associate with it will be the orange one. I'll leave the other one not associated with another shape. It will be locked to the world. Let's set this connector to be a positional type and the max speed we don't want it going too fast so we will set this to go about let's set this to go 20. Let's edit the interactions. Well, on one, we want it to go set the position to zero on press, right there. On two, we'll set the position to 40. And three, we'll set the position, three, we'll set the position to 80. Let's test it out. I'll press two, three, and then I'll press one to go all the way back down. This looks great. Now let's try to reach our goal by moving the pallet all the way up to the third floor. 
I'll start the simulation. I'll drive the truck forward, lift up the pallet, hit A to turn the car. I'll move forward with W, go a little bit this way, and ease on in here. Let's zoom in so we can see where we're going. Lower the pallet with D, or F rather, and then back away. Good. Now we have the pallet on the elevator, so we can begin to move it up. Let's press two and three, and we've reached our goal. So this is just a preview of how you can set up the connectors to be motors that are driven by your keyboard. Thanks for watching.